Hey man, how you doing? What's up, Mike? Good to hear from you. Good to hear you, man. Right on. What do we got going on tonight? Well, I don't have too much. I, didn't, I just started writing down a couple notes, but uh, I mean, I don't usually use too many notes when I when I talk on uh, my YouTube videos and stuff like that. I just talk about what I know about, and I figured uh, you and I talk about a lot of the same stuff, and maybe I'd ask you uh, a few questions, and we can just kind of go back and forth a little bit, and and then I can uh, edit. I'll just what, what I can do is. I can. Uh, you washing sure. your? You I don't mean to ask me anything you want. Okay. Sounds like you're washing your car. No. <laughs> oh, are you are you hearing all that uh, feedback on the phone? No, I don't hear anything. Huh. Okay. So I don't just hear you. That's about it. Hey everybody, how you doing? This is not a live stream. Doing a uh, recorded uh, video here. I'm on the phone with the Punisher, and uh, we just thought we'd have a conversation and uh, make this into a YouTube video. He's uh, he's finally decided to uh, go on a couple YouTube channels and talk to some people and uh, start going that route. So we're pretty happy about that. Uh, how you doing, man? Doing pretty good. Awesome, awesome. It's really good to talk to you and uh, put a voice with the, uh, you know, the uh, the Punisher symbol there. You know, there's... Yeah, I, uh, I grew up in the South, so expect a Southern accent. I, you know, hey, I'm used to it, man. I've actually lived in, uh, lived in Nashville for two years when I was in high school and uh, lived in Norman, Oklahoma before, uh, before I moved here to Arizona. So I'm definitely used to that, that Southern accent. Actually, my friend that's uh, visiting right now, she's been here for about two months. Uh, she's on Twitter quite a bit. Uh, it's An Andrea in the light. Uh, her screen or uh, her what do you call it? The at symbol Andrea the Homegirl. Handle. Yeah, the handle. Thank you. Is Andrea Homegirl? But um, yeah, she helps me with a bunch of that stuff. But she's got a little bit of a, a Tennessee accent. She, you can't hear it too much, but um, comes off every once in a while. Kind of makes me miss Tennessee. So, yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 good in the South. There's a lot of good people. It's a little bit slower pace. Oh yeah, man, I love it. It's like it's nothing like these stupid ass big cities. Like it's I, I don't even know how people live in those. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I was born and raised in California. I was born in Lancaster, California. Then went to Valencia, California, and then ended up in Fresno. And uh, so I've spent uh, yeah. No, I've I've spent a lot of time in. Um, you know, in Los Angeles and San Francisco, I've been all over that state, and I watched it slowly disintegrate to the ground. and get and well, I I wasn't I didn't stick around that long. <laughs> uh, I left about let's see, I'd say about eight years ago now. Been here in, in Arizona just about six years, and I was in Oklahoma for two years. But uh, yeah, I. I just watched it slowly get worse and worse. You know, it was like, um, you know, it was a nice place to live when I was a kid and even growing up and going through high school and stuff like that. But it pretty much, I graduated in 94. And after that, you know, I started working right away and uh, had, had kids pretty young. I had my first kid when I was 21. And I, you know, I got to, uh, I got to learn learned about the real world pretty quick and, and saw how things worked and, you know, started businesses. I owned an insurance agency for five years and uh, was in the military for 15 years. I was active duty firefighter there at the Fresno airport actually for five years. And, you know, I just got to, got to see a lot of how things work and stuff. And I, um, I started realizing, man, this place is messed up, you know, with the, the crime is getting worse. Uh, it's harder and harder to get a job that you can afford to, um, you know, live any kind of decent life. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you got around. I'm glad you actually got out before it became a complete shithole. It, it, yeah, I did. And Fresno, where, where I lived, I, well, Fresno and Clovis is kind of like Minneapolis-St. Paul. They're connected. The only thing that changes is the, uh, the color of the street signs and the crime rate. Uh, so I was in Clovis, the, you know, they call it the good part of town, but... Fresno was uh, kind of 
bleeding over, no pun intended, into Clovis. And um, yeah, I watched the crime rate get, get terrible. There were tweakers everywhere. You know, the meth problem was really bad. Um, yeah. A lot of crime, a lot of shootings. All right, all right, we're back. Sorry everybody for the pause there. I don't know where that froze, so if you see a blank uh, video with just audio for a minute, uh, that's because my screen froze and I had to start the video over. So uh, what did I leave off? Oh, I was talking about how, we were talking about what a shithole California turned into. Uh, yeah, so I left that place and, um, oh, that's when it froze, right? When I started telling you uh, that I was targeted. So yeah, that's, well, that's um, one of the things I, I wanted to talk to you about. Before, before me, had you ever heard of the term targeted individual? Yes. Oh, okay. You, you've heard that before. Well, you, you, yes. stu you study quite a bit. You've got your, your a plethora of information. You got, you've got I've been researching pretty much my whole damn life. And I'm not talking about the indoctrinated education system. I mean, actual research. Well, I can tell. I can tell, man. That's why you have a lot of followers on, on your Twitter account because... I'm about to hit 100k. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good for you, man. That's, that's good because people, you know... I see, uh, I see like rappers and you know these people that uh, all they do is take selfies and stuff like that, and they've got like a million followers and stuff. And I'm thinking, why, why is this? You know, why why don't people uh, follow more accounts where they can get some actual information that's going to help them, you know, make because, it. Because uh, to be honest, some people don't want to wake up. And yep. It, going back to the uh, queue where it says four to six percent will forever be asleep. I actually think that number is higher. I think so too. I, I, I'm with you on that 100%. There's some people that enjoy their cognitive dissonance because the, the truth hurts and they're sometimes, you know, they're guilty and they just, they don't want, they well, don't. Like if you actually think about it, if you think about pedophores and Pizzagate, like a lot of people can't handle that. So if you actually tell people about that, it's like, you think you're describing a horror movie, but you're describing real life. And a lot of people would rather just turn the other cheek and say, no, I, I don't want to deal with that. Man, I have a perfect example of that. I was just, uh, I went to go pick my daughter up from work and I was sitting out in the parking lot and a couple cars pulled in and they both had bike racks on the back. And I was like, these guys must know each other. And they get out and it's um, some Mormon guys are on their mission. And there, there's four of them, and they're walking by, and my dog starts barking. And they, and they stopped, and they were real nice, and they were like, hey, what kind of dog you got? And we just started talking real quick. And, uh, you know, I know they talk to a lot of people, and I do this with everybody. I give everybody my business card that has my website on it, and I just try to give them a quick little 30-second uh, information pitch. You know, like, hey, I'm, I do this and that, blah, 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 and try to explain to them what's going on. And sometimes people will, will say... Oh yeah, you know I'm into that too. I research this and that, and I follow Q, or you know I've I've heard about that, and I don't trust the news and this and that. But I started talking to those guys, and I said, yeah, I uh, I do interviews with like former CIA and NSA and stuff like that. And we talk about corrupt government uh, systems and um, pedophile trafficking stuff like that. And as soon as I said the pedophile trafficking, all four of them just looked at me like my hair was on fire, which. I'm bald. I don't have any hair, <laughs> but, but they just looked at me and they were like, Oh, okay. Well, thanks. We got to go. And it was like, that was, well, that, that's because you've spoken that uncomfortable truth. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I've, I've been doing this for three years now, uh, where that's I just talk 20 years for me. Well, no, I've been, I've been, I've been going at it since, uh, right after nine 11. But as far as doing what I'm doing right now, when I talk to every single person that I meet, I give them a card and try to start a conversation. Um, well, we, we actually got that in common because Building 7 was my red pill. Oh, okay, okay. And I told everyone that, and it's like, I was, what, uh, 17, 18 when 9 11 happened? And, yeah. like, the internet wasn't a thing then. You yeah. know, there yeah. wasn't a whole lot of research you could do. It was like, it, the internet existed, but it was a slow piece of shit. It was, yeah, and, it was still pretty new. It's not like it is now. There wasn't commentators and YouTube channels and Twitter accounts and all that. So back then, it was like, okay, well, I was young, but I'm like, 
okay, I was watching the news and my mother told me when she was alive, okay, mm -hmm. well, two planes brought down three buildings. And I'm like, what? Huh? How, hold on. What? How, how does that work out? Yeah. And I'm like, well, and, you know, at the time, my family, when they were alive, they, uh, they weren't red pilled. It was like, okay, whatever was on the news was true. Uh -huh. and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I'm like, hold on, let's stop and think about this for a second. Yep. Two planes brought down three buildings. Two lightweight aluminum planes brought down three solid steel concrete buildings. Hold up. No. And and then that's that's when you got red pill. That's when you realized, hey, wait a minute, does the news lie to us? No. Maybe I should well, start looking. Even look though back then, I didn't have the evidence. I, you know, I didn't have the, re, uh, the internet research that I have now. Mm hmm but just the thought of that, I'm like, okay, something's not right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. That's Okay, so that's something we definitely have in common. I don't know if you've um, heard me talk about this before, but I was actually a firefighter during 9-11. I was doing... Uh, oh, I, I did not know that. Yeah, I was an active duty firefighter for five years. I worked crash fire rescue at an airport, so I was an expert with aircraft uh, firefighting. Thank you for Yeah, oh, my pleasure, man. I did four, just a little over fourteen years, fourteen years, four months, something like that. And I'd go back and I'd finish, uh, I'd finish it out if I could. Uh, Were but you I, actually ground zero? No, I wasn't. I was I was stationed at the one forty fourth fighter wing in Fresno, California. So, but here, oh, okay. here's a, here's a crazy story. A week before that, six days before that, I was in what's called an incident command class. And incident command is when like the um, the chief of police, the, uh, the fire chief uh, from city, county, and our base fire chief, uh, like the mayor, um, everybody that would get together and work together in a large casual, uh, large sized uh, mass casualty incident would get together yeah. and, and communicate. So we were doing this training for incident command and uh, we went through the class and you know, we learned how to communicate. We, we switched all of our radio We figured out how to get all of our radios to communicate with each other and uh, different uh, on the same channel You know if something like that happened uh, Just standard operating procedures that we would carry out if uh, something like that happened so I get my I get my certificate for that class and on my certificate, I still have it. We, we, I did an episode on crowdsource of truth where we showed that and we talked about it. But on my certificate was a picture of a large body aircraft exploding. Six days later, 9-11 happens. Defined projection. It, exactly. And that's what they were doing. They were, they were preparing well, it's this. it's like the 9-11 war games. You know how the United States Air Force was practicing the exact same drills during 9-11, so actual uh, counterterrorism units were called down because there were so-called drills during the same day that 9-11 happened. Exactly, exactly. It, and it, a lot it, of people don't like stop to think about that. It's like, how often would you have those exact same drills for the exact same movement, just like CV-19 and Event 201, and yeah. yet you're going to have the exact same drills of 9-11 happen on 9-11 exactly. to stop any counterterrorism unit? Come on. And this stuff keeps, if it, if it happened once, it could be a coincidence, but this stuff keeps happening over and over and over and over again. And you're right. And I can name you at least 30 false flags in the past 100 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, def definitely. I mean, we just had one. Well, they're, they're actually, they're rolling them out one after another right now. Um you know, to get reaction from the... Uh... Well, and, and see, that's the thing. That's what a lot of people don't think about is they sit there and think about like, okay, these are just random acts that the deep state does. No, this has been a plan that goes back a very long ways. I mean, you, it starts back several hundred years, actually, but the actual start of it is 1913, the creation of the Federal Reserve. Yep. And then it keeps going on each every, each and every single event that happens brings us one step closer to a new world order. Oh, I, I, and no one actually steps back to actually realize that. Well, here, here's one of the reasons why, and here's, here's why you understand that. So there's, there's people with 
linear thinking brains and nonlinear thinking brains. If you have a nonlinear brain, that's a good thing. It's not like a disease or something. It's a, it's like in digital video editing, you yeah. you edit in layers. Uh, the old school way with actual film, you just lay it all in one line. And a lot of people, that's how their brain works. They only think linearly or in black and white. Something's either good or bad or it's one way or the other. And they don't think out all the different steps and the different processes that, are, that they use to manipulate us and to hide the truth right in front of our face. Um, so that's, you know, you're definitely one of the, most of the Anons, the uh, autists, they call us, you know. They call, try yeah. to call us autistic, um, and I, I embrace it. I'm, I'm a little bit autistic, I, I guess. I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, uh, that, socially. That, that's kind of like what kind of like infuriates me a little bit. It's like the past three years, everybody's like, Operation Mockingbird is a new thing. I'm like, no, the fuck it isn't. No, it's been going uh, on. I've been researching this crap for pretty much my damn near entire life. Yeah. It's not nothing new just because Q come along. I'm sorry, it's been out there, and if you actually are willing to do the research, then you can find it. Oh, absolutely. And it takes a lot of time and effort, and a lot of people aren't willing to put the time and effort into it. And I think... I have. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. That's obvious. That's obvious by a lot of the stuff that you put out. Um, oh, here, here's one other thing I was going to tell you, too, that uh, you might appreciate. So when you talked about when you got red pilled and you saw you know nine eleven happen on on TV, so a guy named oh, well let's see I forget his name actually but he owned a company called Pelco it's a surveillance company in Fresno and it was stationed right there by the airport their corporate office that guy yeah. that guy flew two charter charter jets full of firefighters out to Fresno that survived the nine eleven attacks so three hundred and something of the firefighters a few few cops. Um, but he flew them out and threw them a huge party. He rented one of the hangars at the airport, had an Elvis impersonator, had everybody come up to his house. Um, you know, they had a parade and all that stuff. Well, when those guys flew in, I was out on the, uh, on the runway with my crash truck. Ned Ferguson was another firefighter. He was on the other side of the runway with the crash truck. And we shot water over the top of their jets to welcome them in. And then they came to our station, rode around in our trucks with us. We traded patches, uh, traded T-shirts, stuff like that. And I got to have personal conversations with these guys. And uh, when they were they were talking to us, you know, they were talking about things that were happening. And I was listening to them go, "Why? Why am I not hearing any of this on the news? Why? Why is what the news is telling us completely different from what these guys are telling us?" in personal conversations in our exactly. in our station and that's when i woke up that's when i that's when i thought to myself do we get lied to are they was was this whole thing a setup and then i, I started researching and you know that was in uh <sighs> not well, like it goes back to this like okay larry silverstein was at the world trade center every freaking day and the one day he didn't show up, which was 9-11, was, had a dermatologist appointment? It, Come on. Yeah, exactly. Now, was... Like, a, a, anyone who believes that, I don't even... I, all I could do is probably pray for you, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of that lately, man. I didn't used to be uh, the guy that prayed much or went to church. I, I was an atheist. I thought I thought all you Christian people were crazy. And the... the um, the more I live but life, it, it, and the it's more. It's amazing I... how these times change you, though, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I've seen some things that. Um, yeah, it's just uh, a lot of things have, have brought me closer to God and uh, made me realize that you know that that that's what I need to be doing. Actually, uh, John B. Wells, uh, Care of End of Midnight, is one of the one of the ones that kind of helped me go in that direction. So, but um. Well, oh wait, hold on. I, I almost I wanted to ask you a question about Silverstein. So now was Silverstein the guy that owned the the Twin Towers? Y yes, he's the one that actually signed the insurance. That's for what... them. It was for uh, I think it was four billion, and he had to go through twenty three different banks in order to get the total, total settlement, okay. which was about a year process, and. Uh, yeah, it, it was a it was a rough situation. 
situation. But the thing is, it was only three weeks before 9-11 where he re-signed the uh, insurance for the Twin Towers. Exactly. And do you know what he, that's one of the things I wanted to, that, uh, to ask you about if you knew about this. Uh, and yeah. you obviously do, but do you know why he re-signed the insurance? I, yeah. I, I owned an insurance agency for, for almost five years, Farmers Insurance Agency. I was an agent. Had my... I, I, I've got a, uh, uh, I got one of the threads on my Twitter. I'll try to send it to you, but it shows every insurance agency that was involved. Well, and he... every damn one of them is... Here's why, here's why he changed it. And this is one of the things that, that I learned just from working in the insurance agency. When I heard they updated the policy, a normal commercial insurance policy will not pay out if the loss is because an act of an act of war. Yes, so that, I, knew, I do know that. That attack was considered an act of war. He knew that it wouldn't pay out in that instance, so he went in and he added a rider to the policy to, to make sure that it would be covered uh, in case of an act of war, and that right there is a smoking gun. That that whole just that alone, just well, not even not even that. But if you look at the insider trading, uh huh, the stocks from American Airlines, like the people that cashed in on puts, you know what puts are, right? What 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 are puts? No, puts are stocks against a company that's going to fail. Which means basically, if you know American Airlines is going to fail, uh -huh. and you put puts against it, then you can you can get severe revenue from that through stocks that's, and insider trading. That's new information to me. That's one thing I have I have no yeah. And insider on. trading is a big thing when when nine eleven comes to play because okay. there's been people that's cashed in. 300,000 shares on American Airlines like literally days before it happened. You can't tell me that's a coincidence. So that's like saying, okay, you're going to go to Wall Street right now and you're going to give 300,000 shares to a company that you may think is going to go under. No, you're not going to do that. You're going to do a couple thousand maybe. Yeah, but, but you're not going to jump at all. To that extent, yep. that, that's what you call insider trading. That means you know something. Yep. And it was way more than one individual that did this. It was 1,200 people that did this. Wow. wow. So you're telling me that this wasn't known by somebody? Bullshit. So I wonder how long it's going to be, or if ever, until we see those people convicted. Well, that's another question. Is everybody's hiding behind the curtain of they didn't know, but we don't know what's going to come with that because something may or something may not happen. I, right? I'm hoping. Your evidence, like if, if you own three hundred thousand shares in a company and you trade them all in at once, that to me it should be one hundred percent proof out there that you know something was going to happen, especially when you. Trade them in, what, literally three or four days before the event happens? Yeah, it's like they're not even trying to hide it. No, because they weren't expecting to get caught. So I wonder... But uh, you, you know what caught them, though? The internet. Yeah, oh well, yeah. The information on the internet is what, sorry to say this, but it's what fucked them. Now, I don't know if they'll be held accountable or not, but they are caught, yes. I'm hoping that a lot of those people are... Some of the ones in these indictments that we keep hearing about that are up to like what 170,000 now? Yes. 170,000 indictments. One of the one of the things I learned about those indictments is that each indictment there's a possibility of up to 99 people on each indictment. Uh kind of yes and no not not to that extreme. It's it's more like 12. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Now, the thing is is one indictment can lead to 12 arrests. Okay. Beyond that, you go through a group indictment. Um, but as far as like 9-11 goes, like if anything, and I've researched this for a long time, if you follow my Twitter at all, the, the three biggest players in 9-11, by far more than any, 
is George Bush, Dick Cheney, and Larry Silverstein. Yeah, Ch- if anybody thinks anything different, then you haven't been paying attention. Yeah, Cheney's a big one that I never hear anybody talk about. Oh, I've talked about him. No, I, I'm. You know, so, I, well, I yeah, absolutely. But I, that's one of the names that it's like it, it seems like people are afraid to talk about Cheney. Well, if anything, Dick Cheney is actually pulling the strings of George Bush, which you know, Dick Cheney, he, he's in the CFR, he's in the Bilderberg, he's in the trilateral, like he's. <laughs> biggest deep state like you could think of he was basically the president and and bush was his vice president but it did just no, it, basically yes yes okay and that, that's a very good way of putting it yeah so he was just hiding behind the uh the president saying oh i'm just the vice president that you know I'm, i don't do much well, even, though, even though bush uh jr he did go to yale he's you know part of skull, skull and bones, bones and all that and, we all know about the balls getting tied up and all the stuff he had to do. You've been in the truth movement for a while, but okay. Dick Cheney, he like he's in with the Rothschilds. He's involved with the Vatican. Okay. Like, this dude is as deep state as they come. So he's been to Bohemian Groves. Now I've just kind of put a connection together recently. I I think uh, George Soros is actually controlled by the Rothschilds too. George Soros is a Rothschild. He is a Rothschild. Yes. Okay, that's interesting. Because I've been, and I've been. He's also related to Hitler too. Okay, that makes perfect sense. I don't know if you've sorry, seen. Uh, uh, sorry, I've been restudying. No, don't, the man, yeah. don't be sorry if you're telling me something I haven't learned yet. I mean, that's that's awesome. I, I've, I mean, I don't know it all, but I've learned quite a bit, and you've already told me a few things that I had no idea about. So that's. Well, I, seen my tweets and um i was looking forward to it because i was going to try to <laughs> use some of what what you put out to try to add to mine because i found some really interesting stuff about soros too um, the thing is i'm getting a ton of dms saying like okay why is it not out yet you uh, know like well how far along is it it's like dude, i'm sitting on like three notebooks full of information 26 videos yep. and like 32 article links do you know how much it's, that is to put into a thread? Oh, I have. I completely understand that. That's why when I, I asked you about it, um, I, I said, I'm not trying to rush or anything. I just wanted to, you know, uh, know possibly when that's coming out so I could use some of it. But yeah, some people have no idea how much time and effort it takes to put this information together because it's so complex and it it's not easy. And like to, when I did a, my shift thread and my Bill Gates thread, both of those took roughly about a month. Yeah, but I don't. This Gates thread, I have literally probably ten times as much information as those two. And people are asking, "What does it do?" Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, "What the hell do you want me to tell you?" Like, <laughs> yep. So, I mean, all right. I, this, I mean, it, I'm gonna have, obviously have to consolidate it because if I put everything I have out now, it will be ten. Oh yeah. With, yeah. With what I have, and easily. By the time someone gets through thread three, they're just going to get burnt out and just give up. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a, the uh, attention span, and it's not completely our fault. It's uh, the way we were taught in the indoctrination centers that they call schools. Uh, yes. We have we and the uh, the programming on the television. It uh, taught us to you know pay attention for about thirty seconds at a time and then go do something else. And so a lot of people have a really short, really short attention span, but that's going to have to change if people want to survive this whole thing. They're going to need to learn to pay attention. I mean, I I understand the urgency. I understand people want it out and it needs to be out quick. And I understand that because of all the situations that's going on with Antifa and BLM. And I've sent stuff to Project Veritas and some of the stuff they've actually released. Yep. And what a lot of people don't understand is like, Damn, I got a personal life too. Oh and yeah. When I yeah. have this much information on a desk, yep, or a phone, like, yeah, no, I, I can't just put this all into one little thread overnight. And I'm getting hell over it. It's like, when is your source thread? You give up? Oh, you lied about it. Now, well, no. now, now, remember this: some of those people that are that are messaging you and hassling you aren't 
actual anons or actual uh, truthers. They're people that are paid agitators. And I can almost guarantee you that, that they're just sending you messages to try to discourage you or to, to irritate you. Because oh, I, I know I've bought at least, what, 18 the past week? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they're, they're, I've lived with them. I mean, as a full-blown targeted individual, I get it in every aspect of my life. In social media, through my business, um, in in person, in stores, on the road. Um, you, you said you've, you, you're familiar with the term. You've probably researched it a little bit. Um, but it's, it's um, you know, it's basically what I go through is what the the people in um, that were the victims of the East German Stasi police. We have that going on in the United States right now. Yes. And it, uh, and it has to do that, with... with it, it, actually, going back to that, is I can actually remind everybody, okay, if you think we won World War II, you're wrong. The war never ended. The war is still going on. It just, it's not in the, well, it's kind of in the physical sense, but it's, it really never ended. They basically just came over here and just infiltrated us under Operation Paperclip. Yeah, I've got the Q map on my wall right here, and that's the right in the center of the map. The uh, what is OSS turned into the CIA. Yeah, and I, I did that all on George Bush, like George Bush, George shirts. Like it, it never ended. It just changed the battlefield. Yes, and it turned from physical to political. That's all I did. And 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 weaponized systems against our people. So all of these different systems that we have been paying taxes into for years and years and years, they build up these systems as weapons used against us instead of something that's supposed to help us. Like our... well, that, that's how the elite has gotten so powerful because we actually paid them to do it to us. Exactly, exactly. That's why I stopped paying taxes. I haven't paid taxes for three years. I said, fuck it. If they're going to use uh, my money to destroy my life, and, and take away everything in my life and psychologically attack me, I'm not paying anymore. Well, that and I was broke. It was either pay the bills and uh, fill the refrigerator or pay the taxes. And I wasn't about to become homeless by giving them a bunch of back tax money um, to, you know, keep attacking me. So, yeah. I, you'd be surprised how many like people out there that are intimidated by that because... They're just like, okay, well, if I don't pay taxes, I'm going to go to jail. Well, if you're paying taxes, you're actually, like, helping them at the same time. Yeah, and if everybody quit at the same time, it, it would. there's no way that they could collect from everybody. But, you know, they'll, they'd will they say they'll send people with guns to your house. And, uh, you know, I got to the point where I was like, yeah, fine, send them. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not your slave anymore. I'm not going to do this. Um, so hopefully yeah. that will actually uh, end sometime. I don't know. Who knows? Well, uh, I actually did a thread on the Federal Reserve, mm -hmm. um, and I honestly think that, and a lot of people say this is the enemy, that's the enemy. To me, the biggest enemies right now is number one, the mainstream media. Number two, the Federal Reserve. That's my opinion. Okay, I think it's I I. I agree with you on that, but I think it's all encompassing. I think they've infiltrated so many different organizations and groups that it's it's like a uh, infestation, like uh, like in an organism, like a cancer that's yeah. spread, and it's in so many different. No, no, you're, you're absolutely right. They've infiltrated everything, and I was on uh, Thomas with True Reporting, mm -hmm. and I said the other night they've infiltrated damn near every government, and they have. So let's. That's, as far as the biggest battles we got right now in this country, it's the mainstream media and the Federal Reserve. Until we get rid of those, I don't really see anything changing. Yeah, yeah. I, I see the mainstream media hurting. I know a lot of people that I talk to, they don't trust anything that's on the news. I tell them don't listen to the news. They're owned by six major corporations, and they all get their narratives from the Tavistock Institute, which is in London, England. Why would we be getting our? Uh, why would they be filtering information into news outlets from London, England, for here in the United States? Well, did you know that the Jesuits of the Order actually infiltrated and started Operation Mockingbird in 1947? 
I did not know that. And I should because I have uh, the uh, the Cult of Ball map on my on my wall over here next to the Q map, and I refer to them all the time. So I should I should have known that, but no, I didn't. Like I said, I'll look into this stuff a lot. Yeah, it goes it goes way back. It goes way back. So, okay, so since we're talking about how almost everything has been infiltrated, here's one of the things that that has affected me personally in my life and that I've gone through uh, day after day after day after day of research. And one of the things that a lot of people don't seem to, to want to either believe or admit is that our intelligence agencies were infiltrated and George Soros, who's paying Antifa and Black Lives Matter and has, has used those as a weapon for reaction and division, race baiting, uh, chaos well, in our lives. His actual intention was invading the youth community and actually changing their opinions like through diversity. And that's why he chose Black Lives Matter and NNC. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. But he also... It, 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 he couldn't really just infiltrate the country and say, okay, turn against the conservatives because that wouldn't have happened. But, but if you go towards the youth, and you know, George Soros is actually, he's actually been, he's funded the beginning of our education system. Now, I can't go into too much about that. That'll be in my thread. Okay, okay. But That's no problem. The U.S. education system has been funded in part by George Soros. Yeah, yep. I've actually heard somebody talking about that a couple of days ago. Well, I got proof about it, and I'm, I'm trying to get the story out and everything. Okay, I'm good. Be looking forward to seeing that. So here's one of the things that he did that um, a lot of people don't realize. So so we were just talking about 9-11, and after 9-11, what happened? The Patriot Act was enacted, and it took away all of our uh, Fourth Amendment rights. Anything about patriotic. Exactly. Well, it's, see, it's one of those things where they mock us, and they, they called it the Patriot Act, as if it were enabling patriots, but what they used it for was to target patriots. So exactly, and, and that's what I go back to. It's like referring to not just Democrats or minors, but the deep state in general. It's it's kind of referred to back as vampires. Okay, now what do you do with vampires? You have to accept them into your house, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what politics does with the elite in the deep state. They tell you things with certain wordage that you believe and accept it because they sugarcoat it so much to the point that you don't even actually know what you're reading or believing it. Yeah, they'll do it in riddles or, uh, you know, put yeah, it, put it up. They, they try to get you to accept it. It's like, well, we'll stand up for patriotism when you don't even realize that that's taking away your rights. But they word it like that on purpose just to manipulate it. Exactly, exactly. And then they created the Department of Homeland Security, which everybody thinks, oh, that's for our security. But then no, when I, it's, not. it's not at all. When I looked into it more, when I started researching what the hell was going on in my life, um, Karen Melton Stewart, she worked for the NSA for 28 years. She was an analyst. Uh, linguist sp speaks several different languages and she's actually the first person that I found on the internet that was describing what a targeted individual was and she was explaining what what happens in her life and I was like whatever's happening to her that's exactly what's happening to me and yeah, I heard the same thing from Sergeant Richard Myers like he said basically uh, the Department of Homeland Security is basically a spying device yeah so ha listen to this who do you think they consulted when they create? Did you, or maybe I, you got that that uh, message I sent you on on Twitter? But here, I'll just I'll just read it. So the Department of Homeland Security. This is this is a a, a flyer that Karen Stewart wrote. She and like I said, she actually worked for the NSA. It says, "Why did the U.S. federal government consult Marcus Wolf, former communist East German secret police official, as well as I can't even pronounce this guy's name, Yevinij?" Primakov, former Soviet... Oh, that uh, Ukrainian name? Uh, it's, he was a former Soviet Union KGB official. Oh, Soviet, okay. So we had an East German Stasi 
police official and a KGB, Soviet Union KB, KGB official were consulted when the Department of Homeland Secure, uh, Department of Homeland Security was created. So those guys basically helped the United States create America's Stasi police. And now what, what, what did I just say? Operation Paperclip. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 exactly. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. That, we, did, we didn't win. They just came over and we just stopped physically fighting and it's like, oh, well, it's just... And so, oh God, I, I don't know if I want to go into the moon landing. Is that like going too far? Well, we'll maybe we'll talk about that one another time, but I, I'm definitely okay. interested in that. And um, some people don't believe me when I say this. I, I, I think I told you I grew up by Edwards Air Force Base. My dad worked for Lockheed Martin, and he worked for Rocketdyne, which is the company that built the motors for, uh, uh, for the space shuttle, so NASA, basically. But my, yeah. da my dad's Boy Scout leader was Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong was a test pilot at Edwards Air Force Base at the time when my dad was a little kid. And I've seen pictures of it, heard stories about it, you know, so I've got some... I, I, I already know exactly what you're going to say. Uh, I've, oh, what what was I gonna say? <laughs> as far as the moon landing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, yeah, no, okay. We, we never went there. No, I don't I don't think so either. As a as a trained um, photographer and multimedia illustrator at the Defense Information School at Fort Meade, Maryland, I know how to look at a photograph and and tell if it's been manipulated or not. Well, those there, those. You don't you don't lose technology. Like, at the time you send someone to the moon, and then, what, 50 years later, you say you still don't have the technology? Oh, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, well, Buzz Aldrin, Buzz, Buzz Aldrin told that little girl. He said, that, no, we never went there. That never happened. Exactly. You know, so. And he didn't, he didn't even know he was on camera. Yeah, and that's, that's when you catch him. Then. So, yeah, I usually don't try to, t I, since people... Since I'm targeted and people are constantly trying to call me crazy and uh, send me to a psyche valve, I try to stay away from too much of, of that type you're, of stuff. You're, you're not crazy. I've, I've researched all this. Oh, and I know I'm not crazy. You know I'm not crazy. There's a million other people out there that know I'm not crazy, but they're using this as a weapon against me to silence me. So I was when I started documenting this stuff in November of 2017, and this watch list that I'm talking about. Actually, let me backtrack a little bit. I want to go back to the watch list. Um, so the Department of Homeland Security was created, and then in 2013, right after George Soros paid Obama $30 million, the watch listing guidance um, was updated. And this is when the smith munt Act was revised. So they updated- Oh God, I know that all too well. Yeah, so they, they updated this watch listing guidance, and they, update, and they changed the smith munt Act. And that's when they really, really started going after um, the target targeted individuals. And a lot of them are veterans. Uh, a lot of them are uh, just empowered individuals, you know, free thinkers, uh, patriots, whistleblowers, journalists, et cetera, stuff like that. They put all kinds of people on this list and scrubbed actual terrorists off the terrorist watch list and put a bunch of us, I say us, you know, uh, oh, us oh, type of that's people. A, that's, that's another thing that gets me while we're on the subject. Sure. It's like, how the hell can anyone believe that Osama bin Laden, a guy in a cave with a satellite phone, could carry out such devastation on 9 11? The dude was dead like 14 weeks from kidney failure yeah, before 9 11. Tuberculosis. Yes, and I tell people that, and it's like, you're a conspiracy there. No, there's documented evidence, you dumbass. Well, I can I can back you up on that. I actually, um, should I say this guy's name? I was in a class. I was in a class called uh, Soft War, and so Soft War is basically the use of. I didn't work on this team. I didn't make it onto the team, uh, probably for a, a good reason. They knew that I, I wouldn't keep a secret if uh, it was um, if it was going to be used against our people. Um, but there was the, the trainer of this class, his name was Chuck DeCaro. He was the uh, first CNN uh, field news guy, basically. But he was a test pilot in the Air Force. Um, the more I think about it now, I'm pretty effing sure he was CIA because anything to do with CIA. Is that the same guy that, like, located him in the tent in the desert? No, nope, nope, nope. 
No, Chuck DeCaro, okay. Chuck DeCaro was, uh, yeah, he, uh, you can look him up. I'll send you maybe a, a video with him or something like that. Uh, but he was, he was the guy that started a, uh, a program called Soft War. And it was basically bending the enemy's perception of reality through multimedia. Yeah. And, um, well, it, it just amazes me. Like, and I, I'm not talking about the same guy. I thought you were talking about it. It just amazes me that the U.S. government, the most powerful, basically military, federal, whatever you want to call it, organization in the world, can't find this one guy, but CNN can stumble upon him in the middle of the desert in a cave mm-hmm. and interview him, and then all of a sudden, wait, <laughs> we can't find him again. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, do, how? Do you really expect people to believe that? I don't know if she did. I think I, I think part of it is people so the dollar has has gone down you know inflation has torn us apart people are working two jobs they're trying to take care of kids trying to get their kids to sporting events they're trying to get all the bills paid they're struggling through life and they hardly have time to research all this stuff and so the only kind of news they can get is the you know the 10 minutes of news on fill in the blank uh, fake news media broadcasting company before they go to bed and they're like, well, that must be what's going on. And that they just don't have the time to, to do that. And that's by design, you know? So I don't, I don't blame a lot of people for not understanding what's going on. I think a lot of us that, um, that do this kind of thing, there was some kind of traumatic event in our life that kind of pushed us into researching this um you know you're you might be different i mean every 9 11 was traumatic for everybody but that seemed like it was the thing for you um but a lot of people i mean it it was just common sense it's like okay you're watching you're like okay three buildings two planes hold up what well so i'm sitting there looking at it and i see the guy from mist um and he's like building fires or office fires and i'm like Office fires brought down a 37 story building, huh? Yeah. Like, made out of concrete and light. Like, I didn't get that. And even though it wasn't quite fully red pilled at that point, because I didn't have the resources to prove it, you know, the mm-hmm. internet wasn't a thing back then. But I'm yeah. like, no, this does not make sense because I've had common sense my whole life. And I'm like, no, this ain't working. Well, you're, the, the common sense that you have is very uncommon. Common sense is not common. That you probably know that. <laughs> That's a good point. It's, it's. There should be a different name for it. Uncommon sense. Uh, yeah, but rational sense. Rational sense, critical thinking, one hundred and one. You know. Uh, but a lot of a lot of people don't do that. So that's why well, that's why it's good that there's people like you that will take the time and research and put the information out there, and talk to people like me and we can do this and people can listen to these videos like a lot of people when you like when you put your stuff out it's it takes some reading and some maybe some research to go along with it and some people just don't read they'll only listen to videos or listen to a lot of of people give me crap because my threads take so long to put out but it's like there's no short way to do this because like when i put them out they get six seven thousand retweets so obviously it must be worth it yeah. Oh, yeah. No. There. Well. There's. Remember. There's going to be the, the shills. They're going to give you crap just to discourage you. So. Um, but then there's 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 people that you know they're going to complain about anything no matter what. So you're doing a great job. You're you're a patriot. You deserve a medal for for the all the time that, and effort that you've put into this to to try to help people in our country wake up and understand what's really going on. Try to save our country. You know, try to help us make it through this war. You're definitely one of the digital soldiers that uh, General Flynn talks about. Well, I appreciate that, man. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be. It's just like it's it's so hard. To, and I know you've probably heard this before, but sometimes I just almost, and I know I can't, but I almost just like feel like giving up on lefties. It's. It, I know it's our job to red pill them and try to wake them up, but yeah. Damn, they're so asleep. Like, uh, it just takes the energy out of me. Like, when I try to talk sense into them, it's like... Well, there's... There's there's no open mind whatsoever. 
There's some that are asleep and there's some that are psychopathic narcissists and they know exactly what you're talking about, but they will deny it. You can tell them the truth all day long. Like one of the things I learned going through this targeting thing is gaslighting. And uh, yes. you, you, know, you know what gaslighting is, but I'll just explain yeah, it to some of the people that, that don't. So like a good example of gaslighting is say you live with somebody that's a covert narcissist and they want to, they, they feed on your negative energy. They, they don't, they don't like being happy. They like seeing somebody react in, in a negative way. So they'll steal your car keys and they'll move them over into a different room and they'll watch you run around the house looking for your car keys while you're, you're, you're trying to get to work on time and, and they'll watch you start to like lose your shit, you know, and instead of helping you find them, well, because they're the ones that moved them, they, they start to get that little narcissistic smirk on their face. They can't even help it. They're getting enjoyment out of that. So those people that are giving you shit uh, for what you're doing or pretend like they don't know what you're talking about, they'll, they'll start to see you, you know, get kind of a reaction. They'll, they'll start to see you get mad and they're like, ha ha, look at this idiot. He's getting mad. Well, it's, and, it's actually very funny you say that because I sent a tweet out about that today about the same damn thing. And it's like, not everybody on the other side is asleep. Exactly. Some people just want to see the world burn. Exactly. And those are those... And those yeah, those are the black pill people. They, psychopaths. They know the truth, and they can see the truth, but they just don't care. Yeah, they don't care, or they, they are afraid to get caught. You know, like the, like the, the news, you know, like these politicians, they will just lie to your face. Uh, you know, like... The, the Brian Skelter, that guy, yeah. guaranteed that guy's a, a at least a sociopathic narcissist, probably a psychopath, probably hurt animals when he was a little kid. Um, probably eats babies at night. Yeah, I mean, like ridiculous stuff that a lot of people wouldn't even believe. But those are the kind of people when you call them out for, uh, you know, the adrenochrome stuff or whatever, they'll say, "Oh, you're one of those crazy conspiracy theorists." Not because they don't they don't get you it. You know what's funny though? What's that? It, I, I just said eats babies at night. Okay. Now, four years ago, if I said that, you would probably look at me stupid. But how, when I say it now, what do you think? Oh, I. Okay, this, like, this guy's probably legit. Oh, absolutely. F four or five years ago, a lot of people tell that a lot of the stuff that comes out of my mouth, I would have called me crazy for. I would have been. I would have been like, "What's this guy thinking? Who's who does he think?" These people do this stuff, you know, like I, I would have been one of those people that just I had an ego and I was uninformed and I thought I was cool. So I just, you know, I just blow it off like, oh, these people are, you know, ridiculous conspiracy theorists, blah, blah, blah. Um, like I knew I knew some information, but I, not to the point that from when I really started really, really researching and understanding how bad it really is and started actually ha having memories come up from when I was a little kid. Like this goes way back for me. My baby, my baby pictures got dropped off. Uh, let's see, I don't know how much detail I want to go into this. I've talked about it on my YouTube channel. Uh, long story short, some weird stuff happened when I was in school, uh, like being drugged, waking up, being out of it, um, certain body parts hurting, what whatnot. Um, I'll fast forward to, Someone dropped off all of my baby pictures for me. The only other thing in those baby pictures, now remember where I grew up. I grew up in around the LA area, California, okay. where a lot of this stuff was going on around military bases, et cetera. Uh, both parents worked for the government, FAA, IRS, um, Forest Service, Lockheed Martin. It goes on and on. A lot of, so. When my baby pictures were dropped off, there was a, a postcard and it's got, I'll retweet it again, but it's got um, all of the, the, uh, the presidents from the Clintons back to Ford sitting in the front row. And there was a lot of focus on Jimmy Carter when I was younger. Um, man, it's hard for me to talk about this without saying too much, but you probably get the idea what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's um, one. I, I don't like talking about it. Um, I, I'm 
see. I, mean, I, I get it, and I, I know what you're saying. Okay. But if okay. you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. Yeah, I just direct people to my older YouTube videos when I when I was when it first dawned on me what had actually transpired and what happened and stuff like that. So, and, but, and but what, honestly, I, I can't really say anything will happen to Jimmy Carter because he's just so old. Like, what can you actually do? Well, this is in the '80s. No, I mean like now, like say oh, yeah, yeah, you got yeah. a sealed indictment now. Like, oh yeah, yeah, it's it's you know it's it, like yeah. honestly, if you try to indict him or arrest him, like it, it's not really going to do anything. The dude's already like on the deathbed right Exa now. Exactly, exactly. So here here's a weird story. Speaking of Jimmy Carter, I was coming back from Airman Leadership School. Um, when you're in the Air Force, if you're a, an E3. You want to make it to, I'm sorry, when you're E4 and you want to make it to E5, so from senior airman to staff sergeant, you have to go to Airman Leadership School. So I went out to uh, McGee Tyson Air Force Base, excuse me, in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, went to Airman Leadership School, and uh, I flew out on my way home, and my flight got canceled, and they rerouted me through Georgia. And oh, my home state. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy Carter's home state. And no, peanut farmer, so so I get on the airplane in Georgia, and it's going from Georgia to uh, Los Angeles. I you, ever, uh, you ever been on base at Fort Gordon? No, nope. Uh, no, that's Army base. But I've been to some Army okay. bases. I've been to some Army bases. So, but uh, before I get on the plane, the lady says, "Oh, hey, look, um, we've got some seats in in first class. I see you're on military orders. We've upgraded you to first class." I go, oh, awesome. So I go up, get sit in my seat in first class. I'm kind of groggy because we all went out the night before drinking. And uh, I look in front of me, and Warren Sapp is sitting in front of me. You know who Warren Sapp is? Yes, I do. Okay, so Warren Sapp sitting there with a little girl. I'm, I'm presuming it's his daughter. And then next to him across the aisle is like this secret, secret service guy with a little curly cue in his ear. I'm like, okay, oh, lovely. that's that's interesting. So I look out the window and I see all these like presidential looking limousines and the suburbans and all that stuff. And I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And as I'm thinking that to myself, trying to process it all, Jimmy Carter walks around the corner and walks straight up to me, passes, passes the Secret Service guy and Warren Sapp, and he walks right up to me and he was like, hey, son, how you doing? I just wanted to shake your hand and tell you thank you for your service. Holy shit, and and then walked back to a uh, coach, and I was like, "What the heck? What? Why is?" And I, I asked the secret. I, I, act, I asked the uh, secret service guy uh, on the flight. I go, "Why is why is the ex president sitting back in coach?" He goes, "He gave his seat away so uh, somebody could sit in first class." <laughs> what the hell? And I'm pretty sure that seat that he gave away was mine. So, it's Dude, it is. It's, it's man. I've lived in the Truman Show my whole life. It's uh, it, that's like one thing after another like that. So anyway, that's I'm kind of going off on a tangent. Um, no, but that's okay. Well, why, is your, why is your YouTube not bigger? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's censored, and when you're a targeted individual, it's hard to um, get a. It's hard. It's hard to get a. Well, let's see. There's censorship, and then I also, I think because I focus so much on the one thing that I've been dealing with, and I've been basically just doc documenting the standard operating procedures, techniques, and tactics of, uh, that are carried out on a targeted individual. So I've basically been doing a... Um, well, I'm gonna make sure I promote that. So I'm gonna to try to get you some more, uh, some more subs. I appreciate it, man, because the, the my main goal, my mission in in life, you know, the reason I, I think God put me here, is to help other targeted individuals. I mean, you, you obviously know your story, but I just like I don't get it. Like I see a lot of YouTubers that just repeat articles, and like you actually, you know your shit. Well, thank you. I've I've put a lot of time and effort into it, and I've I've been, you know, this is my first rodeo. I've been I've been through a lot of stuff in my life, and uh, that I can agree with. Yes. I've I've. <laughs> but, uh, I could say some stories on here, but 
Yeah. That'll be a whole other episode. Yeah, well, hey, this doesn't have to be the only time we, we uh, do a YouTube video. I, I, I had several people, because last night I said, I, I, well, I tagged you in the tweet. I said, I almost forgot to mention um, Punisher and I are going to uh, do an interview tomorrow night. Uh, just thought I'd let you guys know or something like that. And a lot of people were like, hey, that's an awesome that's an awesome interview right there. Looking forward to seeing that. And, so, and you know what? It, it, if you don't want to call me, you can call me Red. Okay. A lot of my, a lot of my friends call me Red just because to take away from, uh, I guess, the cliche. Yeah, yeah. No, well, that's cool. I mean, uh, you got a name. You got a nickname, so... Um, well, my, my real name is Jesse. Oh, okay. Okay. But a, a lot of people, I don't even know where it came from, just a lot of people associate me with red. Well, do you, do you have red hair or anything? Or? No. I mean, I'm Apache. I've got black hair, dark skin. Oh, okay. Okay. But I guess red kind of matches the uh, Native American heritage. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Red it is I mean, when we talk on the it, phone. It, it, it's kind of half and half. It's either like red. And like, honestly, I, I kind of prefer Red because he's a little bit more down earth. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, you know, Punisher's your screen name, you know, and that's has to do with the. Uh, well, yeah, I, I don't mind that either. It, yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. It's just when people call me Red, I kind of feel like a little bit closer connection. Yeah. Okay. Well, now now people know your nickname uh, that uh, that follow you on here because a lot of a lot of people, you know, I know um, just from your Twitter account, they know you as the Punisher and they know that you're you know they know your Twitter account and that's pretty much all they they know about you so when you when you talked on um, uh, and, two, what was and, the, and, the first thing it'll, it'll probably be another episode but when I tell you about my past my history my occupation you'll kind of understand why I'm not trying to be arrogant at all in saying this please don't take it that way but I'm Damn, you're probably the real life Punisher you probably ever used. Oh, okay. What? What? Uh, actually, I was going to ask you that earlier. Do you have any kind of military history or anything? Or yes, and uh, traumatic events, family loss, daughter murder. Uh, I'm sorry to say all that. Like, what? you're you're on my YouTube channel, man. You can say anything you want. I've talked about some but, some really traumatic yeah, stuff, and that's. Yeah. Did you wait? Did you say your daughter was murdered? Yes, she was. Addison Lee Wright. She was murdered by the person I had her with. Man, I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, I mean, it's, it's all good. I'm not looking for sympathy. I, I mean, no, I, I know that. I, I, I know you're not. You don't seem like two years of... ago. And it's just like it, it, it's just kind of one of them things. Like, um, uh, how do I say this? Like. If you watched the movie The Punisher, mm -hmm. probably I'm damn near one of the closest things you'll probably ever meet to the real thing. Well, and I'm not saying that in an arrogant kind of way. I'm really not. Well, good. We need some people like that that'll stand up and um, get rid of some evil. I just, I've been through so much shit. Like, it's, if I was to tell you how much stuff I've been through, you'd be like, no, nah, you're lying, dude. Not Come me, on. buddy. No. And I'm, you, I'm you like, could... no, I'm not. No, you're talking. Just... You're talking to somebody that would that completely understand. I understand what long-term trauma-based mind control is. I understand that people have that. I'm not saying that you're that you're a victim of that of long-term trauma-based mind control, but um, I understand traumatic events, and I understand that some people's lives are um, harder to believe than than fiction. Well, this is actually my fourth Twitter. And the other three were kind of like just so-so. They, you know, you probably seen them, you probably haven't. But this one that I have right now, mm -hmm. it was kind of like, okay, I'm done, and I'm gonna just like I'm gonna be myself. Like, God, it's so hard to describe. But it, it's like, okay, I, I'm done with the bullshit. Yep. I'm gonna be me and. The theme of it, I was like, okay, what theme do I need to create? And I was like looking at it, and I'm like, you know what? Holy shit. Basically, I, damn, I am the damn Punisher. And I don't mean that in an arrogant way. I really don't. But it's just like, yep. holy shit. If you look, if you've seen what I've been through, and I, I'm sure 
me talking to you, I'll, I'll let you know, but it's not an exaggeration. I don't doubt you at all, my friend. Not one bit. What can you can you say like what kind of when you said something about your occupation? Can you talk about that at all, or do you want to? Or do you... Uh, I will do that privately before I discuss it in public. No problem. No problem. Just because I, in not, case the wrong people may be watching. I well, I can guarantee you they are. So let's that's probably yes, yes they are. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very quickly. Oh yeah, yeah. If you're talking to me, I guarantee you this phone call is being listened to. Um, I mean, yes. we're 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 talking off, uh, to make a YouTube video, but even if we talked off the record, it's being listened to. And and I, just just for what what you do, the kind of research that you do and stuff like that, I can almost guarantee you that you're on some of the same lists that I am. Anybody that well, I am, I am. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've I've noticed me on it was a uh, not just a propaganda bot thing that tries to like uh, get rid of me, mm -hmm. but it's some very high level leftist Democrats. I've been on their list and I'm like, what in the hell? Oh yeah. Like, yeah. I, I'm just supposedly, I guess a QAnon researcher, truther account. Mm -hmm. Why the hell am I showing up on people that's got 500,000 followers asking me to be removed from Twitter? What the fuck? Well, because you, you know what you're talking about, you verify it and, um, People will listen to you, and that's one of the things that scares them the most: is educated people that have a public presence, and they can help wake other people up because then they can't control those people anymore. So, um, you know, that's something you should be proud of. Actually, you're, you're. Well, yeah, I'd like, I, I've like. Uh, I've. It was a. Uh, what was it? Um, that was a couple months back, but Mike Rothschild mm -hmm. like put me in one of his tweets, and I'm like. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, why is this dude? Uh, because you're like, on there, including me in his tweets. You're on their radar. You do good research. You put out good information, and people are listening to you, plain and simple. And dude, they don't... I'm honestly surprised I still have Twitter at this point. To be honest, I am too. I'm. I mean, not. I'm not surprised that you still have Twitter. I, I'm surprised I still have one too. The the stuff that I've put out, um, but maybe, you know. I, I still have hope that there are, not hope, I know, I know that there's good guys, the White Hats, that are looking out for us. And they've proved that to me a couple times. Q says that there's no outside comms, um, and I'm not going to, well, let's just put it this way. There's. Okay, well, here's one thing I got to say. Okay, I'm going to disregard that whole statement about Q because... You said there's no outside comms. Q said there's no one on Twitter. Okay, well, if there's no one on Q team that's on Twitter, then how does Q actually link Twitter accounts? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I actually, I think that... I th but, um, shoot, no more. Sorry. But, no, um, yes, it? there is people on the Q team on Twitter. I don't care what Q says because you cannot link tweets to Q if you are not on Twitter. Exactly, that makes perfect sense. I think they use an algorithm to uh, to search Twitter and have a lot and kind of filter through a bunch of the information and stuff like that. And they also have, uh, you know, people individually that might be, you know, military sitting in cubicles, reading through the tweets and stuff like that. And then, you know, find stuff and go, oh, hey, here's a good one, let's use this. So, but when I, when I, what I'm talking about as far as when they say no outside comms, when, when you, when these people, the bad guys basically, when they want, when I do something positive and I get some information out, I do a good interview. Like say, I've done, I did an interview with Kevin Ship. Um, yeah. You know who he is. Did did well, one did, did the one with Karen Karen Stewart. Um, whenever I do something like that and I put that out, immediately I get a reaction. And they have these really long, drawn out almost unbelievable ways of communicating with me, like literally through license plates, through my social media, through, it's a series of events that will happen where they'll literally send me a message and there'll be covert death threats or um, telling me that something bad is gonna happen in my life. Uh, they'll basically, you know, kind of like they do in the movies, they'll put something out in the movies and they're telling you, it's like fair warning. 
and yeah. you have to figure it out or else you're the idiot basically that's how they that's how they look at it they'll do that to me in these ridiculous ways that you know like i'm sure there are people that are listening right now going really they talk to you through license plates huh um Oh, I'm yeah. like, do you really know where I'm at? I get that all. I get that all the <laughs> please, time. Please, please try that. Please, I'll beg you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I get that all the time. Unfortunately, these people do know where I live. I've had break-ins in my house. They'll come and uh, steal items out of my house, move things around, just like the Stasi police did. I've come into my house and my lamp has been uh, moved into the other room. Uh, magnets on my refrigerator are moved around. Items from my eBay store are missing, and then those items will sell, and then I can't ship them out to the uh, to the person. Lights will be You're turned. Armed, right? What's that? You're armed, right? Uh, no, I'm not. No, I'm a I'm a You're big. Not. Well, here I'll, I'll explain that to you. I'm a big Second Amendment advocate. I had a safe full of guns. Three weeks after, so so I'm not. Sure, if you if you're if you're aware of this, but in these systems that I was talking about, where they infiltrated Department of Homeland Security, they put out standard operating procedures for police, fire, and EMS to take part in this organized stalking and harassment. Which yes, I'm, I'm, I'm not anti-police. I'm not anti-fire department. I love firefighters. I was one for five years. They were my brothers. It's what woke me up about 9/11, because they killed a bunch of my brothers and sisters in an attack. It's how I got yes, started doing this. So one of the police officers, and it's on my website, if you check out my website, um, I have a video of this, of this going down. One of the police officers here in town was harassing me. She was gaslighting me in a store. And I stopped, uh, I turned my phone on and I started interviewing her in the store. And I caught her off guard and I, I basically, I asked her, I, I said, hey, do you know what targeted individuals are? And she goes, yeah, I had one yesterday. <laughs> You know, just really weird, fake laughing and stuff. And I said, really, does that targeted individual know they're being investigated? And she said, no, he died. Ha, ha, ha. Laughing about this guy, this targeted individual dying. And, you know, I told her, look, this shit happened to me when I was a kid. I'm, the, all this stuff is happening to me right now. You know what targeted individual actually means, right? What it means? Yes. Well, I mean, I know what they do, but what... Well, yeah, that, that's it's, it's a watch listed person. It's a person that's been declared as a domestic terrorist or uh, they call us a non investigative subject. Their enemy. Their enemy, exactly. Targeted. Yes. yes, yes. I am an enemy of the deep state and I'm proud of that. Exactly, yes. Yeah. All right. um, so, so, anyway, I did this video of this, this lady and I uploaded it to YouTube. Three weeks later, at the same store, uh, this guy was stalking and harassing me in the store. You know, they follow you. In, they follow you into stores. They follow you down the street. They do all kinds of stuff. And I was documenting all of this at the time. It was like four o'clock in the morning. I was getting up early so I could get to work. I'd get up early and start my work day. And um, this guy was just fucking with me. And as I was pulling out, it's it's kind of a long story. But as I was pulling out of the the parking lot, um, I. He backed out to block my to, to block me, and that's one of the things they do. You'll go through a parking lot, five cars will all pull out and block you. And it's not something, you know, th that happens when you're driving through a parking lot, but this will happen repetitively every single day, and they'll try to antagonize you and get you to just lose your shit, basically. So I, this guy was doing this. He was doing the weird stuff in the store, followed me, got behind, got behind me in line. I was standing real close. Uh, blocked me when I tried to leave. You know, he waited for me to leave and then went and got in his truck and blocked me. So I followed him out of the parking lot and I was I was in the process of, of getting the information so I could give it to a private investigator. So I followed this guy out of the parking lot and I just, uh, I was reading the side of his truck and it said like ACT bioenvironmental um, engineering. And as I was reading that, he rolls down his window and he says, what's up? I said, oh, I'm just doing some research on uh, gang stalkers. And he goes, game stalkers? What's a game stalker? I, I said, it may be somebody you are, you know, because they'll, they'll try to act like they don't know what you're talking about. I said, maybe, yeah. some, maybe somebody. Yeah, exactly. Gaslighting you. Yeah. I said, maybe somebody you are. Uh, and he goes, oh, yeah. And I said, yeah, do some research. 
He goes, oh yeah? I said, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was stupid, stupid conversation. And I start pulling away and he goes, you mean for faggot ass, faggot asses like yourself? Which like, first off, who says something like that? Uh, and I, yeah, and I, I, he, he triggered me. I let him trigger me and I, I, I got pissed off and I got out of the turn lane and hauled ass next to him and I, I pulled up next to him. We were coming up to the stoplight and I just yelled at him, fuck you motherfucker. And right when I yelled at, he pulled a gun out of his window. He pulled a Glock 9 or 40, probably a 40, because um, I found out later he was a former police officer. Okay, so my video froze right in the middle of when I was talking about that. Um, how how I, I ended can't up, how actually I, see your video because I'm almost on. No, that's okay. That's a, that's okay. I was just uh, letting the people here know that um, that are watching this. My video froze. If, if you do share, just like like. Send a picture of my Abby, because when people see that, they'll obviously know it's me. Okay. Oh, for sure. For sure. I will do that. So, and okay. I'll, I'll share it uh, when it's done. Just to finish this story so I don't get off track to, to explain to you why I don't have any guns anymore. Um, that guy pulled his gun out of the window, saw that, made a U-turn, and I started driving back to my house. And I was kind of in shock for the whole thing that just went down. I was like, okay, this guy just... This guy just set me up to get pissed off at him, and then he pulled the gun. I dr start driving back to my house, and I'm just about to my house, and I see this dude in my rearview mirror. And this is like a few blocks away where this whole thing went down. I see this guy in my rearview mirror, and he's in a construction-type truck, and he turns on his rotator lights. You know how they've got the rotator lights on the construction trucks? Yeah. He turns those on like he's pulling me over. And I was like, oh shit. This guy just pulled a gun on me and then followed me to my house. Both of my kids are asleep upstairs. I don't want to pull into my garage and let this guy know where I live. So instead of, and instead of pulling straight across the street into my, into my garage, I turned right and pulled in front of my mailboxes thinking maybe, okay, this guy's just gonna um, take off, go the other way or something like that. He gets out of his car and he's like looking for me and then he gets back in his car and starts driving towards me. So I took off through the neighborhood. When I got to the other side of the neighborhood, there's a bunch of cops waiting for me. And he had called 911 and told them that I pulled a gun on him. And they arrested me for aggravated assault with a firearm. So, oh my God. So I, and they, they, they literally <laughs> let that guy stand outside of the police cruiser. Well, I was in the back of the cruiser after they shook me down and everything. And, um, they let him stand outside of the police cruiser and laugh at me. He was just sitting there laughing at me. The guy's what the fuck? Oh yeah, yeah, it was all part of the, the PSYOP, you know, the mindfuck thing. So, so I get arrested for aggravated assault. Did they, did they do anything to him? Nothing at all, not anything. Are you, seriously? Yeah, absolutely, and I told him, I was like, that guy pulled a gun on me, I have it on video. They wouldn't look at my video, they wouldn't let me have my phone. It was, a com it was a complete setup. And I, I explained the whole thing to him. And they, the, when they asked me if I wanted to press charges, they asked me in a way that I didn't understand what they were saying. They said, Do you, um, would you like to assist? And I was like, assist what? And they were like, well, would you like, to, would you like to assist? And that's apparently police speak for, would you like to assist in prosecuting or something like that? I learned that later when they, uh, after doing more research. So they yeah. gave me the opportunity to press charges, but they said it in a way that I didn't understand. Um, so yeah, they arrested me, took me to jail, uh, went through uh, one year and eight months in court, spent almost $50,000. Uh, the attorney turned on me, went through a kangaroo court, the judge, uh, long story short, I ended up sign being forced into signing a plea deal after asking to go to a trial and they denied me exculpatory evidence just like they did to General Flynn. The, they would not give me the body cameras. I tried to file a motion to compel for the exculpatory evidence so I could prove that they'd set me up. They refused. Yeah, but you, you can't really be surprised about that though. Well, I was at the time because I had no idea that this kind of corruption took part in our police oh, departments. Oh. I, I didn't. I didn't know. I'm now. I'm aware, and I now I think about how many people are in prison that shouldn't be there, you know, yeah, and how right. many should be in prison that aren't. So 
long story short that yeah I wore an ankle monitor on my leg for a year and eight months going through that court thing going to court back and forth getting screwed with ended up signing a plea deal and now I have a felony I've been through a year of probation and uh, have to call over in. something you didn't do exactly and I, ha I have to call into a drug test facility every single day and get drug tested and they even tried to give me a false positive uh, about a month ago, they told me I tested positive for alcohol and ET or ETG and creatinine, which creatinine just means that you uh, that your sample was diluted. When I asked them for a for proof of the sample, uh, a printout from the the testing facility, they refused to give me one. The probation officer refu refused to give me one, and I was like, these guys. Uh, are trying that's against the law. Exactly, it's completely against the law. So I started doing some research on the drug test facility. Guess who, guess, you'll never guess who, well, you might. Who owns the drug testing facility? <laughs> I have a feeling you're going to say the name I'm going to be I'm very familiar with. Everybody's familiar with this name. We just got done talking about him. It's owned by Roth, no. Rothschild Holding Corporation. Why am I not surprised? Imagine that. Imagine that. So, I you mean. You know what I say? And, uh. I know you followed me for a while, but this is the one thing I say, and a lot of people really don't understand it fully when I say it. Everything is connected. Oh, it's so much bigger than almost anyone like, can, can understand if they haven't been through something like this. I people mean, for, don't understand that. Like, oh my God, like, it, all right, look. I can literally tie every single false flag from uh, 1913, the Titanic, 9-11, Vegas, ever. I can tie all that together in one thread if I wanted to. I don't doubt that at all. At all. They've been and, using them over and over and over. Pearl Harbor. Like, Pearl and, Harbor. And, and what a lot of people don't understand is it's the same damn people involved in every single one of them. Exactly. That's like, okay, why are y'all so surprised at this point? Well, a lot of people haven't done the research you have, and they, their brain doesn't work that way. It's hard for them to digest all that information, and they are still brainwashed, in, and they're under the impression that the government wouldn't do that to us. The people, they don't understand that it's not the government. It's the people above the government that are running the government that run the left and the right and keep us all divided so we can be all fighting and against you. You know who that is, right? Yeah, the Illuminati. The Illuminati. There you go. Ding, ding, exactly. ding. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's So it's divide and conquer. And you know that. I've been preaching about for the entire past year with my Twitter account. Yeah, you know that. The Illuminati. You know that. I know that. Um, I actually... And when I, and when I say that, it's like, oh, the Illuminati, you're a conspiracy theorist. I'm like, really? You don't think that there's someone above pulling the strings for everybody? Yeah, yeah. When somebody tries to tell me that, I refer them to Kevin Shipp's video talking about the deep state and the shadow government. Because that, that's a little easy, easier for them to understand. Um, but, yet yeah, they just don't, they don't... A lot of people I don't think have had the experience um, in different, maybe different jobs, different life experiences, understanding compartmentalization and how that works. Well, it goes back to that, uh, what is that uh, Democratic uh, senator that called for places being burned down that like condoned it in Seattle, but when it came to their house, Oh. They were all against it. They were like, <laughs> yeah. oh my God, call the cops. Yep, they were like, burn it to the ground. And then when it came to their neighborhood, they're like, wait a minute. No, well, hold on a second. Yeah, there was an NBA, yeah. NBA basketball player that did the same thing. Yeah, I, I forgot who it was, but it's like, that's literally what you're doing. You, you think you're creating an army? What you're doing is you're creating a, I don't know what the word is, other than just stupid-ass individuals that, are gonna like cause chaos and they're not on your side yeah you pay them they get their paycheck and guess what they don't care afterwards Wrong. they're gonna like destroy everything in their path you paid them yep. and guess what uh they're not your friend 
No, no, they're they're all it's um, like survival of the fittest out there for them. They just and they'll they'll throw anybody under the bus. They have no integrity. It's all about the money. Uh, Rob from uh, Edge of Wonder, at which oh hey here's a good segue. Uh, everybody, the Punisher is going to be on Edge of Wonder tomorrow. So make sure you tune into Edge of Wonder and check that out. He's going to be talking to them. Oh, th- th- those are my main guys. Yes. Yep. They- I've been with them for a while. Like I love Edge of Wonder. Yep. But uh, Rob, they, t- they, they, they took me under the wing, and oh, God, I'll deal with them till pretty much I die. Well, that's that's good. There's some good people. Rob, that's what made me think of what you were talking about. Rob called them uh, Rinta Thugs. Or did, or did, no, no, Jordan Sather did. He, he called them uh, Rinta Thugs, and Rob, Rob was talking about it, I think, on one of his shows yesterday or the day before. But uh, they are, they're rented. Whoever pays them, that's, they'll, they'll do whatever somebody pays them to do. And that's the, well, these it's people. like I said, like, it, it, it aggravates me because it's taken so long to get this source thread out because of how much information I have, but I have 100% proof that George Soros is behind everything. And when I say everything, I'm not talking about Antifa BLM. Mm-hmm. I mean in the entire insurgency of governments of countries. Yes. Oh, yeah. He's he's taken down countries, and he's it, he's that that's like and, I, I was saying. I was I've been trying to tell people that he infiltrated our intel agencies, the FBI, the yes. you know Department of Homeland Security, the FBI put in this Stasi type policing system that is. They're, he's basically paying for both sides for the the police procedures to. Um... Well, uh, hey, let, let me go back one second. Sure. You said paying for both sides. Who's done that? Ex- the, the Illuminati, the the Freemasons. The Rothschilds. Rothschilds. Paying for what? All wars on both sides. Always throughout history. Yeah. Yes. For a long time. Yep. And and. Uh... Trump say uh, history repeats itself. Uh, yeah, history always repeats itself, and that's why uh, even if there's negative history, like on eBay, uh, you you are not allowed to buy any Nazi memorabilia. And not, th- I mean, I'm one of the most anti-Nazi people that you you could would ever meet, but I still think that that stuff should be able to be sold because it's part of history, and people need to learn about history. So if somebody wanted to put like a museum together to show people what the Nazis did, they need to be able to have access to that stuff. So if you just wipe that history off the face of the planet, nobody will ever understand what happened and then be educated enough to not let it happen again. Well, it's like me. I'm I'm Apache. I'm Native American. Okay. Like, if anything, during all this race war, or whatever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. I should probably be more pissed off than anybody, but I'm not. Why? I don't know. Why? Because it, I know it's all bullshit. Yeah, like, I mean, literally, okay, this land has been taken from my ancestors because I'm a Apache. Yeah. And I don't really give a shit because I know that was something that happened in the past. Nothing to do with me. I'm not offended because guess what? It's my ancestors. It's not me. And so, so you're smart enough to know not to take that out on me because I'm 45 years old and I wasn't around then. Exactly. I, yeah. That's exactly the point I'm getting to. It's yeah. like, why would I take that on on you when you had nothing to do with it? It's like, okay, I don't know anybody with slaves. I don't know anybody who's owned slaves. Mm-hmm. So why would I be willing to give repar- reparations or whatever the fuck you call it Ooh. to Black people, or any kind of people, Mexican people, whatsoever. Yeah. It's got nothing to fucking do with me. You're exactly right, and that's we all need to to realize that. Sorry, my dog's barking. There's people setting off fireworks outside. Oh, uh, stop it. Willie, come here, buddy. Come here. It's all right. He doesn't like the fireworks. So yeah, Arizona, they they have fireworks. Uh, sh- Shop set up on every corner right now, and they've been setting them off for almost two weeks now. So, oh, that's all good. yeah. Well, hey, and, and, that, that's just my biggest message. Just like, okay, well, y'all want to talk about race? Like, if anything, my race should have more to be upset about than anyone. 
that was one of the biggest genesis. We don't say a damn thing and you're <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We got chaos. Okay, we completely missed that last 20 seconds because Willis is over here going nuts. Hey! Hey! It's all right. Sorry, man. He's he's losing his shit. Hold on. Hold on. And the people that have been fucking with me for years. Uh, it's kind of, long story short, I came home and his leg was broken. Oh, God, no. No. Yeah. Not, uh, so, I, I can't. They they, com they sorry, can, I can't think stuff like that. They can completely, they dislocated his back leg, and I got home and his leg was all crooked. The people yeah. that do this can, shit. Can I say it a, a little bit mildly? Uh, if you mess with an animal, I'm sorry, I'll defend them. That, that's, that's more YouTube friendly, but I. Okay. I uh, I completely understand what you're saying, man. People are, are cowards. And so that's one of the things that, that being a targeted individual, they attack everything in your life. They go after your pets, your kids, everything that you have worked for in your life. They destroy everything slowly. Well, well, well here's the thing. What makes them do that? That's my thing. They, well, one, they're socio it, sociopath it, it, or psychopaths. Is it really brainwashing or is it actual demonic possession I you know it could be both it could be both because some of the stuff these people do are pretty it's pretty damn demonic um, well, well that's what I'm getting at is like it, it it's kind of getting beyond somebody brainwashing at this point like it, it's getting to the point where it's like okay you're you're damn near literally just possessed somebody told me that when they break into your house and they steal items that you care about that they use those in their satanic rituals. So like, um, I had my old jacket from the fire department. It had the, uh, you know, the Air National Guard fire department logo, and then it had my name embroidered into it, Barden, underneath. And I loved that jacket. I wore it all the time. You know, I'm proud. I'm... I've had the same thing happen to me. And they stole it from me. And they knew that that was like one of the things that I really liked that I, I wanted to hold on to. And they saw me wearing it all the time, and they, they stole it. And when I was I was telling somebody about that, my my old friend Desiree, actually my ex girlfriend Desiree, who she she's actually been on Edge of Wonder. She's the she's the targeted individual that's been on Edge of Wonder uh, that they interviewed. Uh, oh, I know her. Yeah, she's my ex girlfriend. She lives about twenty. Oh my god, dude. Yeah. Dude, I know. Oh my god. <laughs> I know her. Small world, huh? A very freaking small world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, man, we used to, she, she's, so she's gone through very similar things to what I've gone through. And we used to spend a lot of time together talking about it, swapping stories, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, that was before she was even on Edge of Wonder. We were still dating and um, watching, you know, all, like Edge of Wonder stuff. And um, she goes, yeah, I know those guys. Uh, went to... Um, this diff this seminar, or uh, she went to a thing in Hawaii and met Ben and Rob, and then uh, went to another thing. Uh, well, she was there with uh, Jordan Sazer too. Correct. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So she was there during that thing, and Corey Good, and all those guys. Uh, I remember. Yeah. So, but um, but yeah. Uh, what made me think of that? Oh yeah, she she was on Edge of Wonder. Uh, talking about that with targeted individuals and she's been scanned she's um, you know she's friends with uh, Dr. Kildee K-I-L-D-E and she Dr. Kildee was actually oh. married to uh, Major General Stubblebine who was the guy the whistleblower the, the general in the army uh, uh, are you so close to her? Uh, we, we're friends I mean like we don't hang out or anything like that but um, you know we're well, I, I was just asking like Send her okay. That, she, that, that, that's up to you. No, it, but, yeah, that'd be great. The more you know, the the, the more that people can communicate and contact, the better. Um, well, my thing is like it, pretty much damn near anybody that's friends of Edge of Wonder is uh -huh. my friend. Okay. Yeah. That's well. She's she's a good person to contact and 
uh, listen to about different things. She's the one that introduced me to uh, John D'Souza. You know who John D'Souza is? Yes, I do. I've talked to him. Yeah, yeah. We I spent the day with him. He's my video, the first video on. Uh... That dude knows a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, he does. He he's cool. he he taught me some some. He is, he is the X Files brought to life. He's the X Man. He's the reason they made the X Files. Yes. He's one of the few people in the world I trust. Um, yeah, and I really I really admire that guy. He's a real patriot. And he's a real smart guy, and he's not afraid to um, talk about things that people might call him crazy for. But he's got the, proof. The, 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 there was a lot of things I used to think he was crazy for until I looked into it, and I'm like, dude, yeah. this guy's not crazy. Yep, yeah, he's been there and he's done that. He's seen a lot. I mean, he was one of the investigators in 9-11, and he talks about yeah. it. He says, we didn't find any airplane parts. There were zero airplane parts. How does that happen? Yeah, when, and, he, uh, when he got into the, uh, the removal of the evidence of 9-11, I was like, Hold on, I thought I was the only one talking about this, and this dude's like going in detail about it. Yeah, and he and he was there. <laughs> so I mean, it's yeah. not like he just researched it. He was there. He testified in federal court. Um, uh, well, don't you did, think it's like kind of suspicious that <clears throat> all the the steel, which had evidence, that was sent to China to get melted down? Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, yeah, like, come on, come on. Yeah, like seriously. Oh, there's, there's. If people, if people don't see that and think, okay, something's going on. Uh, sorry, there's no hope for you. Yeah, yeah, there's. I mean, we could go, we could do four or five hours. We could do two weeks straight just talking about 9/11 and all the um, inconsistencies oh, yeah. and, and all the uh, testimony and everything. Study 9/11 20 years. So. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You, you, Try to tell me something I don't know. I, I probably can't. That's probably not, not possible. Well, as far as the targeted individual thing, I could probably teach you a couple things that you, you haven't learned about. But as far as 9-11, you probably know for sure know more about it than I do. Um, but, uh, well, shoot, man. Let's see. I think... I think we're at like an hour and a half or so here, and I and I know a lot of people won't spend that much time listening to um, to a YouTube video that's that long. Is there anything else that we can that we can go over, or anything that you wanted to, to say before we? Yes, th there is one thing. Okay. Um, I want your your thoughts on why space force or SpaceX, whatever you want to call it, why did they fake the launch? Which, the SpaceX launch? The recent one? Yes, yes. I don't know enough about it, that it, to it, even it, comment on it. I've researched it enough. It's obviously faked. Really? The, my question is why? Huh. Well, I have no idea, man. I have no clue. I haven't researched anything about the, the SpaceX thing. Um, okay, okay, did you see the mouse? The mouse? Yeah, the mouse that was actually on the outside of the space shuttle as it was in space going like, what, 200,000 miles an hour? This is news to me. I had no idea that anything like that happened. Yes, it has. <laughs> Dude. Uh... Like I said, I'll research everything. Maybe it's just another part of the big show. Maybe maybe we live under a firmament and uh Well, I, I know for certain I mean, I know for absolute certain and anybody listening, you know what, think what you want, I don't care. But we did not go to the moon. My thing is SpaceX was kinda like under Trump. So if we think that, what is that saying? Like, what is the purpose? I don't get it. I, I don't either, man. I, that's a really good question. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. So, the, Elon Musk supposedly is putting... I, I do not trust him. I don't. I don't know what to think about him. I, I, have, I don't know what to think about him. But anybody that made it that, uh, that high up, that made that much money uh, during the last several decades it doesn't seem like they would allow 
anyone to to do that well that wasn't connected to the cabal somehow. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Is like, okay, there's got to be something more here. I don't know what, but from what I've researched, and I'll say this again, we did not go to the moon for one or two. SpaceX uh, launch that just happened. What? What was that? A week ago? Something like that. I do not believe that happened. Hmm. I don't even have an opinion on it. I mean, I, if you it, look at the shadows on the freaking ground of the show, if you look at the freaking mouse video, like there's so much bullshit. Like no, this this didn't happen. And that that's supposed to be under Trump. Trump is part part of. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like is is he playing along with it for a reason? I, that's one thing that I do definitely think that Trump has to play along in certain situations and his IQ is so high. His, his IQ is 156. So he, he, he knows how to play the long game. And I think if he didn't pretend like he was playing along with some of these people, that they would go after him even worse than they already are. So he probably has to pretend like he's going along with certain people and then maybe flip it up later. I don't know that. I hope I hope that is the scenario because there's a couple other things because I, I love President Trump. I think he's the greatest president we've ever had, but there's a couple things. No, that... no he is, and I'm not doubting him at all. My, my thing is I'm just asking questions because... Me, me too. It there's, just... there's a few things he's done that, that I'm like, wait, why? what's going on here? Why, why does this not seem right to well, me? Well, it, it doesn't make sense. It's like, okay, well, obviously with how much him and the government knows that CV-19 is a bullshit farce, why are they playing into it? Like The only, I, the only answer I have for that, the only plausible thing that I can think of is they have to let these people go ahead and carry out s some of what they're, what they're trying to do to, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? To incriminate themselves, basically to prove that they were doing a lot of this stuff and then they, they can actually... I, I, I get that to a certain extent, but mm -hmm. like at the same time, like at how many lives will it cost to do to, that? To completely agree, completely agree. Because I'm, I'm there right now, man. This, like I, I told you, um, I'm hurting. And I, I, I know a lot of people are watching and be like, Punisher, you're, you're, you're against Q, you're a shill, you're against the plan. No, I'm thinking logically, which is exactly what Q told us to do. Exactly. And I'm, I'm sorry, I've been doing it for, for 20 years. Uh, Q's been doing it for three, so shut up. Q said to question everything, and that includes Q. And they also yeah. said that distant... I, I will question there. I'll question Q, I'll question POTUS, I'll question anybody and everybody, because... That's what I've done since day one. Well, that's been the that's supposed... reason I've been red pilled pretty much longer than damn near everybody I know. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to question everything, and if it doesn't, if it doesn't work out, um, you know, if it doesn't make sense, then that's the stuff we need to talk about. And if it's something that we're not, if if it's something we're being fooled into, then we can figure it out. And and if you know, like they say, future proves past. If it's something that turns out to be a good thing in the long run, and they were like, okay, well, we had to do this because of this, then that'll make sense. But we definitely need to keep questioning. You know, I listened to Amazing Polly. Do you know who that is? Yeah. So I listened to a lot of her stuff, and she was questioning a couple of things that Trump did. And she wasn't saying he's a bad president or um, anything like that. And she also said, you know, I'm getting tired of trusting the plan. This is taking so long. Uh, what's going on? And people automatically just went after her, uh, saying, you're a shill, you're this, you're that. And, you know, I really don't believe in my heart that she is. I think she's a an honest, goodness, true, good soul. And she's just... I, I, I can give you another prime example is Shauna SGT report. Mm -hmm. He's catched absolute hell because he dared to question the plan. And it's like, okay, well, he questioned the plan. That's all he did. That doesn't mean he's a shill or a traitor or a, a troll or whatever you want to call it. 
Yep. He just simply said, look, okay, things ain't working out. Like, he questioned the plan. Uh-huh. It's okay to question things. And that's what a lot of people in this movement don't understand. Yep. It's like, it's okay to question things. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. And and if anybody, uh, like, like we just got done talking about too, if anybody says anything different than that, say go back to Q post, whatever it was, or, or several times when Q says question everything. Everything. That doesn't... And that it, it's, and, and I've been questioned POTUS, I've questioned Q, and you know what? It doesn't hurt my feelings. Because, like I said, I've questioned everything since damn near the day I, I can remember. Yeah. When I was back in school looking outside the window, when everyone else is sticking their face in a book. Yep. Because guess what? I always thought there was something different out there. And I'm not going to let one person, one movement, one being tell me, okay, this is how it's going to be. Yep. What I'm going to do is research for myself, question myself, and if something doesn't fit, I'm going to call it out. Yeah. I don't care who yep. it is. And, ask and for- if you want to unfollow me for that, guess what? Do it. I don't care. Yep. Yep. That's, that's, uh, well, th- there's a, there's a term for you in, for you and I, and other people like that in actually in army, uh, documents and the ones that uh, old army documents that, that talk about re-education camps and they talk about us and they call us empowered individuals. And they say empowered individuals when need to be re-educated. And that's part of what a lot of us. Very well familiar with that. Yes. Yeah? Okay. So, you know, but that's good, man. That's uh, don't ever change. Stay that way. I, I'm not no, going to. Cha- no. I'm it's not going to change like, either. My thing is, I, I want everyone to like think for themselves. Like, okay, I get the Q movement is good. I'm part of it. Yes, that's fine. I'm not saying anything bad about it. So if you think I'm going against it, you're not listening. My thing is, think for yourself. Yep. If things don't make sense, it's okay to question them. Okay, if you get met with some resistance, that's fine. It's going to happen. Yep. But stop just basically treating Q as a religion. Hear that, everybody? Think, think for yourself. Don't just... Exactly. That's how we all got in this mess in the first place. Um, well, yeah, because we got into this mess because people didn't think for themselves. They didn't question the narratives. They didn't think to question the mainstream media. And it's like, okay, everybody played into it. So it's like, okay, well, now we got to like fight against it because no one dared to approach it before. Yep, exactly. Exactly. I, I completely agree, man. So, all right. So let's make that the, uh, the, the end of our video here. If there's anything that you learned from this, other than all the other information that we talked about, is to think for yourself. Be an empowered individual. Don't accept information uh, like a religion and just absorb that information and then regurgitate it. Think about it for yourself. Use your critical thinking skills and question everybody regardless of whose team you're on because once you just join a team and then you do what those people tell you to do, you're not your own sovereign person anymore. So always think for yourself. Use your intuition. Use your gut. And um, don't be afraid to question anyone because anybody that has good intentions does not mind being questioned. Even me. If they, yeah, yeah, anyone, these people that that are carrying out, you know, the plan. They, if they have good intentions, I shouldn't say if they have good good intentions, I know they do, but, but regardless, if somebody has good intentions and they aren't trying to hide something, they will ev- answer your question. If not, then eventually they'll answer your question if they're trying to hide certain things for um, strategy. Uh, but they'll event- eventually answer your question. And if they don't, they're usually trying to hide something. So always qu- ask questions no matter what um, what information you're getting so you can verify the information for yourself and make your own decision. So I'm not going to get off the phone with you right now. I'm just going to end the video. So uh, everybody... If you're not following Punisher, it's at on Twitter. It's at Punish P U N I S H D E M. Is it 1776? Yes. Okay. Punish 
DEM1776. Uh, follow him on Twitter. He puts out an amazing amount of good information that you can use and you can do your own research and dig into things some more. And um, make sure you go to Edge of Wonder tomorrow. If you're not uh, subscribed to Edge of Wonder on YouTube, they're a great YouTube channel, uh, Truth Channel. They have edgeofwonder.tv uh, where they have their own uh, website outside of YouTube. And Punisher is going to be speaking with Ben and Rob tomorrow. This is, that's correct, right? You're going to be with Ben and Rob talking talking about some things. Well, I'm going to be at just a mod tomorrow. I'm still oh, okay. working out the Zoom. So. Oh, okay, okay. I wasn't sure. I thought you were going to be interviewed on the show tomorrow. So, well, he's no, going to be. I, I will be in the future. Yes. Okay. All right. So he will be on on Edge of Wonder in the future, but tomorrow he'll be on there on as a mod, and um, go check that out. It's a good good show. I watch that one all the time and get a lot of uh, good information from them. So. Hey man, it was really good talking with you, meeting you, uh, hearing your voice, putting a, a voice with the, the name, and um, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this with me. And uh, anytime, brother, you know, anytime. Just talking with me, so. All right, we're gonna go ahead and call that the show. Again, I'm not gonna hang up on you here, I'm just gonna go ahead and end the show. All right, everybody, have, have a good day, good night, wherever you're at. Uh, what, what Truman say on the Truman Show? Good morning, good evening. Good afternoon and good night. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> See you all later.